Hey, let's continue our journey to BFS and let's solve the maze three. Go ahead and read the question. So there's a ball in the maze with the empty spaces and the walls and the ball can go through the empty spaces by rolling up, down, left or right, but it won't stop rolling until hitting a wall. And when the ball stops, you could choose the next direction. So there's a hole in the maze and the ball will drop into the hole if they're rolling on top of the hole. So given the ball's position, hole's position and the maze, find out the ball could drop into the hole by moving the shortest distance. So oh, we are still looking for the shortest distance, but the output is slightly different right now. So let's go ahead and keep reading. So the distance is defined by the number of the empty spaces traveled by the ball from the starting position all the way to the hole. And the output of the moving direction is by using four letters. And this stands for up, down, left, or right. And since there can be uh, several different way, shortest ways, so you could output the lexical graphically smallest way. So what that means is that if you have several paths have exactly same uh, shortest path, and then you can sort it uh, by using the letters, that uh, letters combination with the directions. And that's how we uh, understand the problem. And now we, we understand what the question is talking about. And let's think about how we solve it. And from the maze one to maze two, we added up one more dimension. So it used to be, we just want to find out if there's a path to lead from the starting position to ending position. But from maze two, we know that, hey, not only we're gonna find a valid path, but we're gonna know what, what is the valid path and what is the shortest, shortest distance. So that's why we convert the problem from BFS to Dystra. And by solving that using the shortest distance and sorting everything, uh, shorting, sh sorting the distance by using heap, which is a main heap in Python. And uh, sort distance and we pick the lowest distance every single time from a node then we start calculating for the next uh, for all the neighbors so we don't change much from the maze 2 to maze 3 mm -hmm. except that we adding actually we actually we actually adding one more dimension so we had uh, co two coordinates that's the first two dimension we have the shortest distance that's uh, the third dimension uh, we talk about in the maze 2 and now like we have the another dimension, which is the letters. So we want to record what exactly the direction we picked in the history. So we're going to put that into our uh, code as well. So um, it shouldn't be like really hard. Uh, this is a hard problem, but I would say this is like a harder, harder problem for medium questions. Um, the reason is that we have one more dimension. But generically, most of the code uh, we should uh, see will be still similar to, uh, to what we see back in maze 2. So let's go ahead and start writing some code, and we're going to figure out uh, how we do, do this along the way. Um, we still going to have the boundary, right? just in case we are across the boundary. So we, let's define the maze. And that's row and column, and we're gonna have a uh, heap as well. And what's gonna be in the heap right now? So let's think about it, right? Initially, we definitely need a distance, like before, right? And we're gonna have ball zero. Uh, it used to be like start zero and start one, and that's our initial position, but now they changed this uh, initial position as the ball, and they changed the destination to the hole. So just remember that. Uh, now, like we have this, so this is exactly the same thing with the previous problem, but now we have one more dimension because we want to track what exactly the direction we picked before. So, and we're going to use a string to represent that. So we need to adding up, start appending the, the directions we went to, what we went before, or you can use a list to tracking that eventually convert the list to, uh, to a string that that works too. But I'm gonna just gonna use a string to tracking what directions we went before. So that's the one more dimension we had. So initially, like first problem, we only have the coordinates and in the maze two, we have the distance. And now we have a pattern to tracking where we up to, like what directions we pick in the history. So that's the, that's the differences we have. And we're still gonna have uh, all the directions. And let's go ahead and put all the directions right there. And let's go up and let's go down. Let's go left. Let's go right. Okay, so we've, we had the first uh, four directions and then we're still going to have uh, the distance. So the distance is going to be 
just like before we're gonna have a hash map uh default the and the value is gonna be the shortest distance so it's gonna be just a integer and uh okay so distance let's initialize the distance for the ball one right uh the ball one like the starting position so let's put the let's put a tuple right there and that will be equal to zero okay so perfect so uh now we can start writing the bfs so we're gonna pop out our distance l and the pattern and i and j so those are the value we're gonna pop out and we use q hip pop and we're gonna pop up from the hip okay so that's the initial position so we have the distance we have the pattern and we have the coordinates for x and y so we put i and j as our initial parameter and so just like before if we already reached the destination and since we are actually sorted by the heap and then so we just return a pattern so why can we return a pattern and uh it's kind of interesting because the heap will sort based on the first parameter so when the first parameter is equal between two paths so for example you have two paths having the same distance and the heap was sorted by the second parameter so which is the pattern and that's how we defined in here the lexicographically smallest way and that's why we we sort it in this way and the heap will automatically tackle that so you can directly return the pattern because the heap already sorted for you and once we have that we can start exploring the all four directions so how do we explore for all four directions we i think we talked about this before and we're going to use dfx and uh, dx and dy stands for the change of the directions and uh, we have the directions right there and then we're going to have the step and the x and the y uh equals to the distance and i and j so we did this a lot of time as well and one of the caveat like we we keep uh, saying in the previous two problem is that so when the ball starting from here if i want to go up i'm not going to stop right here i'm not going to stop right here because it says uh the ball will not stop until it hit the wall so it will keep scrolling in the in the empty spaces so for example if i pick the up direction so the ball will go up go up go up go up and it will stop right here it will stop right here because i'll stop right here because the wall is right here so it's not gonna stop within the empty spaces so let's go ahead and write how do we do that uh, so we're gonna need a while loop and as long as we so there are two two uh, I, I just learned this actually so there are two ways to write this right so we can pick the next direction so uh this is our current position because we take the x as the i right so this is our current position and this is the change of the direction so we provide for different directions we're going to try every single directions so we pick the new direction and we compare with the boundary so if it's within the boundary and this is x and y plus dy and less than n so if we are within the boundary and then we can definitely uh, keep growing and this another condition is as long as we are not seeing the wall and then we can keep growing right so that's why we gotta put uh if the maze the new direction for the maze is not hitting the wall and then we can keep going so if we are not hitting the wall that's that means like we are not equal to one because one stands for the wall and then we can keep going keep going up you can use the old way that and checking if the the x and y are not equal to uh zero that means like we are still in the white spaces or the empty spaces we can keep rolling and then after the while loop you can you can backtrack so we can write in that the other way so it's the same thing it's just uh three different lines three more lines okay um and then we add uh the the directions we have the step plus one as well and we are done and once we are done and we can keep going uh another caveat another caveat so for example if the host right here if the host right here and then if the the ball is across in the hole that means like we are done we are done and then but we are not directly return because the return value is going to be from here because we want the shortest distance so the return value should always from here but what should we do if we already across the hole that means we can do another computation but how do we do another computation is by doing this uh if x and y 
is equal to the hole. That means like we are in the meanwhile, we are prematurely reaching the hole and we will not break that. We're gonna break out. Uh, after break, so we're gonna do some computation. So we're gonna put uh, the position into the queue and start calculating if this is the best position or not. So we're gonna push everything into the heap and let heap, heap decide if we, uh, once we're reaching here, uh, once we're reaching the hole, if this is the best position or not, if this is the best path or not. So we let the heap decide. So how do we let the heap decide? And there are, there are two things to check. One thing is we are checking if in this X and Y, in this coordinates, did we already calculate this or not? If we already calculated, okay, good. So we can keep going. Or the step is less than the distance for uh, X and Y. So th that's a, that's exactly what we did before, right? Just like the last problem. And, oh, okay. Just like the last problem. So if the new steps we are calculating is less than the distance, then we have a shorter distance. So that's why our distance will recording the new distance we have. And we just recording the steps. All right. And once we have that, oh, one more thing. So we have to push let the let the heap decide whatever we want to calculate right um and then we put uh step and pattern right here's the thing here's the thing we are missing one thing so most of the code are good except right here patterns so we have the step is being updated but it seems like our pattern is never being updated but we have to update it, right? Because eventually we want to return a pattern. So if the pattern never changed and we can't do that. So what's the, the right way to update the pattern? It's actually we want to record every single time that we move into one direction, we pick one direction and we want to record which direction is that. So for so the best way to do that is actually right here because we, we we know we have the four directions right here. So we just record, hey, if we minus one for the X coordinates, that means we are going up. And this means we are going down. And then this is uh, going left. And this is means we are going right. Okay, so we are going for the four directions. And we already add everything into directions. And also the distance will also change as well because the distance will not measured only by the steps, but also it's lexical graphically, right? And that's why the distance will not only be the distance. So we're actually modifying the code on top of the, the maze two. So I'm actually initially writing the code for maze two, and then we start modifying the, the code and then we keep going. Uh, and then, uh, if we reach the hole, so we just return the pattern. Otherwise we keep going. And um, if X and Y equal to the whole, so we break and we do the, another computation and we put everything into the, to the steps. But since the, the distance is measuring the steps and also the pattern, so we just put the patterns there, pattern. And what's the directions we have in, in this case right now? So we just use D as the direction to recording where we up to, like what's the, the directions that we pick? And the direction we pick, we are adding that to our pattern. Uh, we will add that to our pattern. Okay, so we're gonna add that to our pattern. So when we compare with the distance, we also have to modify that as well. So that's gonna be step, uh, which is the integer represents like how, what's the shortest distance. And also the pattern uh, plus D represents like the his historical pattern, like all the directions we picked before and also the directions we pick at this run, the direction we pick in this run and we compare everything. So if none of this work, and then just like before, it used to be return uh, negative one. Now we're gonna return impossible. Is that lowercase or? Yeah, it's lowercase. Okay, let's try that. Yeah, it works. Yeah, so let's go ahead and recap. So what we doing? We basically have our boundary defined and we have the initial position being changed. The reason we changed is because this problem requires us to return the sequence of the directions we picked before. 
So we're going to record that by using this. But why don't we put this at the first spot? We also want the shortest distance. So we, the first condition is we want the shortest distance. So if we have server path having the shortest distance, and then we can pick by lexical graphically smallest way. And that's why we have the shortest distance on, on the top priority. And the second priority is going to be the lexical graphic, graphical. And we also have the direction. Every single time we pick one direction, we want to we wanna know if it's going up or going down or going left or going right. And that's why we add one more parameter on top of the here. And we know that if we pick up and we record that into the pattern and our distance will be also changed. It used to be just recording the shortest distance, but now we are sorting by two parameters. One is, short, one is shortest distance, another one is the patterns and we put everything into the distance and then we start doing everything just like before and the heap and it's diestra uh, we are sorting by the shortest distance and we popping out the pattern and the coordinates so if the coordinates already reached the hole and we since we're directly popping this out from our heap the heap already taking care of the minimum uh, looking for the minimum uh distance and the pattern so we already did that so that's why we the node we're popping out from the heap will be the smallest pattern and also the smallest distance. So once we get that, that's our terminal position. Once we re break from the ter terminal position, uh, we can start looping for all the neighbors we have if we are never reached here. And we can go ahead and exploring all the neighbors for directions for each direction. For, for, for up, we'll pick the direction up. U stands for up. So that's why we have the third parameter D to tracking the patterns we have. And then we can start using three parameters to tracking where we, where we go, which direction we go and the, the distance. And X and Y will keep going. And then, so as long as we are not hit, hitting the wall and we keep going, oh, we can modify this actually equal to zero. And then like right here, you have three more lines like the previous problem. So we, we can backtrack one step. Um, but look right here, so we, what we did is we checking if the next position, if we pick a direction, we check if the next position will hit the wall. If it doesn't hit the wall, we keep going and we add the distance. So the distance will keep rolling, keep rolling until we hit a wall. Until or or until, no, I'm sorry. Until we, uh, we, we are rolling on top of the hole. That's our destination. So once we reach to the destination, great. We can calculate it so we can see if if the historical pattern plus this round will less than when we go into the hall in the previous time so we can reach a hole from a whole bunch of different ways we can reach from the up from the uh from the bottom from the left or from the right and if the new calculation is less than what we stored before great we find an even shorter distance or shorter pattern like even smaller pattern. Great, we, we store that into the distance. And then we push that into the queue. Great. And the X and Y, remember, it's gonna be hall because we will break from here and we we're gonna pop it out from here and great. We, we got a solution. And that's how we solve this problem by using BFS. Okay, uh, I think we are done and we're gonna move on to the next problem. Uh, I'll see you guys in the next video.